Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler. It is November 2nd, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now, for those of you who are regulars here at the Robert Scribbler video blog, you will note that I have been absent for a couple of days, and I would just like to say that there is a reason for that. I am currently engaged in a project. It is a individual clean energy based project that I am going to support as a promotion for both individual and systemic action on the issue of climate change in a later blog. But I just want you to know that you have not been abandoned. I will be continuing to blog even though I have a time constraint or a constraint on my time due to this project. I'll just leave it at that for now. And for today, we are going to, well, for this particular video blog, we're going to be talking about Arctic sea ice. I'm going to be providing you with my weekly assessment on Arctic sea ice extent and Arctic climate and Arctic weather trends over, over the, the week to 10 day time frame. And looking at Arctic sea ice extent right now, we see that Arctic sea ice extent is ranging about fourth lowest on record for today, according to the JAXA monitor, the JAXA sea ice extent monitor. I'm gonna try and highlight the red line here, uh, showing the progress of sea ice refreeze during the fall of 2018 as we approach the winter. Refreeze lagged a bit, hitting record low extents, daily extents, for, for uh, about a couple weeks ago. But over the recent past two weeks, Arctic sea ice has, has accelerated, and, and I'm sorry, refreeze has accelerated. And at present, Arctic sea ice is in the range of about 8 million square kilometers, which is about 1.8 million square kilometers below the 1980s average for this time of year. So Arctic sea ice is still greatly reduced versus past historic trends. But what we are seeing at this time is, is not record low levels of Arctic sea ice, a bit of a bounce back over recent weeks. Now looking at the measure of of Arctic sea ice concentration provided by the University of Bremen, we do see that there is quite a bit of refreeze going on now in the region of the East Siberian and Laptev seas with, with rapid refreeze now underway as both the near land ice is beginning to form in this zone and as ice has been expanding southward from the poles. We're also starting to see I start to enter uh, sections of the Kara Sea, so, uh, th and this is a, a, a typical refreeze pattern for this time of year, even though Arctic sea ice is still greatly reduced. Uh, the Chukchi Sea has remained rather open due to much warmer than normal temperatures, uh, sea surface temperatures in the Chukchi Sea, and this is one region where sea ice refreeze has really tended to lag for 2018. The Canadian archipelago is now mostly ice covered with the exception of the western section of the Canadian archipelago and much of the Beaufort Sea is now ice covered. The Hudson Bay region is, I'm sorry, the, the Baffin Bay region is, is also starting to see a ramp up of refreeze as well with Hudson Bay remaining mostly clear. Overall refreeze is lagging as we have tended to see during present years as Global temperatures have risen to a range of 1 to 1.2 degrees Celsius above normal. And as the Northern Hemisphere Pole has seen more warming than the rest of the globe due to a climate change, a human forced climate change related process called polar amplification. Moving on to the near polar region daily mean temperatures as recorded by the Danish, Danish Meteorological Institute, we see that fall of 2018 is remaining 
well above average in the far northern regions for this time of year, with the baseline average shown in the green line, and that's a 1958 to 2002 baseline. So already a warmer than normal baseline, incorporating some, some rather warm years. But as you can see, this red line here for, for much of 2018 has been trending above baseline, particularly in Northern Hemisphere winter, spring, and fall, with the fall showing much warmer than normal temperatures overall. And at present, uh, departures above normal appear to be around eight or nine degrees Celsius for this zone. So, so much, much warmer than normal in the 80 degree north latitude and northward to the pole zone at present, even though, as you can see, the trend is, is moving along a seasonal cooling trend that much departed uh, above normal from the baseline. I'd just like to call your attention to freezing degree days since uh, the, the summertime and, and as we move into fall. And this is, this is a measure provided by both, well, it's provided by uh, cryosphere computing and, and it's, it, it's a measure based on a freezing degree day monitor provided by DMI or the Danish, Danish Meteorological Institute. And at present we are at record low or near record low levels for freezing degree days. Uh, present freezing degree days in the range of about 450 up so far. I'm just gonna double check that. And, and what we are seeing is that for 2018, freezing degree days are, are, are much lower than normal, and, and we are right on the edge of record lows. It looks like we're in record lows for freezing degree days. Now, freezing degree days are a measure of temperatures below freezing for the entire Arctic zone, and the less freezing degree days you have, the closer the Arctic is to thaw. And, and to melt, and so, so this is a measure of how much warmer than normal it's been in the Arctic, and the less freezing degree days you have, the warmer the Arctic is as a whole, and what we are seeing right now is, is, is that so far for 2018, the entry into freeze, freeze season is challenging record lows um, for freezing degree days and record warmth that we saw in 2016 and uh, 2017. So, so kind of a big deal right now. Now, looking at overall trends and forecast trends in the GFS monitor for the Arctic zone as a whole, at present, the Arctic is about 3.6 degrees Celsius above normal, and that's much warmer than normal. We, we've seen the Arctic as a whole ranging from about 3.5 or, or 3 degrees Celsius, if you're looking at some of the lowest uh, temperature departures above average, so three degrees Celsius above average to around five degrees Celsius above average for a large part of Northern Hemisphere fall. These are really high departures for the Arctic region and, and much warmer than normal temperatures for fall. It doesn't mean that the Arctic is warm, but it's much warmer than normal. And this, this zone is, is the coldest region of the Northern Hemisphere usually for the, the most part. So, 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 so this environment is, is critical to, to Arctic systems and Arctic wildlife. And, and the cold period is, is really essential to a number of climate related systems as, as well as to a number of environmental systems. So if the Arctic is, is much warmer than normal during fall, winter, and spring, that's a problem, and, and we're seeing that now. Now, looking forward, it does appear, according to GFS, that these departures will tend to tamp, tamp down a little bit. Looking at, by November 7th, dropping to around the three degrees Celsius above normal range, with, with a couple of dips down into the upper two degrees Celsius range above normal. And then by the end of the monitor, dropping down to around two degrees Celsius above normal for much of the Arctic zone. And even though we continue to see a lot of energy transfer running in through a big ridge zone over the um, northwestern section of North America running in through Alaska and northwestern Canada, as well as a large ridge zone continuing to run through central and eastern Siberia 
and another ridge zone coming off of the Barents Sea and Northern Europe. So these, these energy transfers into the Arctic still remain healthy, despite the fact that the Arctic temperature anomaly departure above normal is expected to drop down to around two degrees Celsius above average, which is still rather warm for this time of year, but not as warm as we have seen over recent weeks. Now, looking at the satellite picture provided by NASA Worldview, we can really see this uh, sea ice starting to expand in the infrared satellite shot and this is a, a nighttime shot, so it's one, one we, we don't really get the, the vivid colors in, in the nighttime shot. And the reason why we're looking at nighttime shot is because the, the satellite, the visible satellite, is, is dipping down a bit as, as the Earth tilts away from the sun. So we have a, a black zone over the pole, a, a blank zone over the pole when it comes to uh, visible satellite shots from the visible satellite sensor, but we have an infrared satellite sensor that, that does provide us with a lot of information. And zooming in, you can really see the sea ice starting to expand, particularly in the East Siberian Sea and in the Laptev Sea region, although you can still see the large areas of open water here in the Laptev Sea, some, some large areas of open water remaining but the, the largest zone of, of notable open water is still in the Chukchi Sea, coordinating with much warmer than normal sea surface temperatures in this zone. And as you look at the Beaufort, you can see that the Beaufort has refreezed quite a bit with um, a lot of cracks in, in the sea ice here um, as the sea ice continues to expand. So, so rather broken ice pack in the expanding zones as well. And you start to see some rather thin ice starting to expand into Baffin Bay with the Canadian archipelago uh, really starting to see quite a lot of refreeze. And, and you can start to see the, the refreeze running in toward the Kara Sea as well in this infrared shot. So, so overall, the Arctic is, is refreezing rather rapidly, even though uh, as, as we would expect it to, even though refreeze is lagging due to warmer than normal temperatures. Now, I'm going to go ahead and flip over to the visible satellite shot because I, I want to show you some other features that are notable, namely hot spots and wildfires. Now, I'd just like to point out that the, the hot spot measure is measuring thermal anomalies. I've had some questions on the video blog asking if these thermal anomalies have anything to do with methane. And in fact, these, these thermal anomalies are mainly provided to show an indicator of wildfire activity. And so they're, they're hot spots on the land that pick up in the, in the infrared band and, and they're an indicator of wildfires. They're not an indicator of methane emissions. You would have to look at a methane emissions measure to, to get a, a, an, a, an accurate view of, of methane emissions in the Arctic or from other sources like fossil fuel-based infrastructure source, sources, which are major methane emitters due to leaks. And unfortunately, we've seen more methane emissions from fossil fuel in, infrastructure as fracking has, has spread across the globe. And, and this is one of the contributors to the uh, a, a, a rising level of concentration in the atmosphere of methane, which is the, the number two uh, greenhouse gas, which is adding to the radiative forcing at the top of the atmosphere. Number one greenhouse gas being, car of course, carbon dioxide. Now, going back to the thermal anomalies, it is worth pointing out that we have quite a bit of, of hot spots showing up in, in a number of these ridge zones where temperatures have tended to be above average. And so, for example, in, in British Columbia and in, North, in, in Western Canada, we're still seeing a, a number of wildfire hotspots. Now, these are not very intense wildfires, but they're notable for this time of year. We shouldn't really be seeing wildfires as we are getting into November in uh, northern latitudes, but we are still seeing them. And we also see a number of hotspots over here in Siberia, lower latitudes from the Arctic, but still rather high latitude zones at, at around 61 degree north latitude for the furthest north hotspot here in Siberia. And so that's 
that's just another indicator that we're, we're seeing much warmer than normal temperatures in this region. And we're seeing wildfires in and hotspots in zones that we wouldn't typically see for for this time of year. It's also worth noting that there are a few scattered hotspots over here in Western Siberia and some in uh, sections of, of Europe with a few hotspots here in Northern Germany. So, so a number of hotspots still visible. Of course, this is not directly associated with the Arctic environment, which is above the 66 degree north latitude, but it is an indicator that some of the winter zones are much hotter than normal. And it's also in, an indirect indicator because it the, these hotspots do tend to come up as an issue with regards to energy transfer and these high amplitude jet stream ridge zones, which are at present funneling a lot of heat into the Arctic. Now, I just, I, I didn't pull up the, the sea surface temperature anomaly map, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So you can look at these sea surface temperatures in the Arctic zone as a, close, as a closer. Uh, much warmer than normal sea surface temperatures have been ventilating a lot of heat into the Arctic environment this fall for this fall period. And sea surface temperature anomalies are, are starting to drop a little bit, but but we do still see a lot of rather warmer than normal sea surfaces in the monitor, in particular in the Chukchi Sea and in the Bering Sea with a large zone now shifting into the Bering Sea of about four degrees Celsius or more above average, which is much warmer than normal, uh, what much warmer than average for, for typical measurements at this time of year. And in this zone, we've seen a, a high amplitude jet stream ridge, as well as quite a bit of much warmer than normal temperatures in Western Canada and in Alaska. And this, these warmer than normal sea surface temperatures have helped to likely help to extend the ridge pattern in through this zone here near Alaska. It's also worth pointing out that sea surface temperatures in the Laptev Sea are ranging about one to two and a half degrees Celsius above normal, which is helping to produce a lag for sea ice refreeze. And into the Barents, Barents Sea, sea ice is, I'm sorry, uh, sea surface temperatures are ranging from about 1.5 degrees Celsius above normal to about 3.3 degrees Celsius above normal in this DMI measure. Uh, Baffin Bay appears to be about average for this time of year with Hudson Bay, sections of Hudson Bay ranging from about 0 0.5, well, zero degrees Celsius above average in the east, probably on aggregate to around one to 1.5 degrees Celsius above average in the western section of Hudson Bay, which is probably one of the reasons why we're seeing sea ice refreeze lag in that zone as well. So an overall picture of Arctic sea ice, Arctic weather, and Arctic climate. At present, sea ice refreeze is accelerating a bit, although we are about fourth lowest on record, and we still have quite a bit of above normal temperatures with likely record heat or near record, well, record warmth or near record warmth for the Arctic for this time of year so far during the fall of 2018. Thank you for joining me and I will be chatting with you soon.